everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today we are going to talk about a very current phenomenon initiative that a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about. I haven't seen a lot of environmentalists, zero waste, low waste, sustainability content creators talk about this so I... Let's get into it and tell me your opinion down below as well. So what we are going to talk about is the Team Seas Initiative project. This is something that I wasn't aware of existed and then comments started coming in on my videos about what do you think about the Team Seas Initiative and I just... Uh, and a couple of hours went by and then my feed on YouTube got up to date and I saw what all the buzz was about. 411 is really that Mr. Beast, a very popular content creator on YouTube and Mark Rober, another very very popular content creator are teaming up with yeah lots of content creators to remove 30 million pounds of trash from the sea they have created two videos about this one about a beach cleanup and one involving a huge robot cleaning up tons of trash it's kind of a donation based project so whenever one dollar is donated from a viewer a subscriber any individual, um, one pound of trash is removed from the sea. And this is a format that we've seen plenty of times, both with other trash cleanups. And it seems like it's going pretty well at this point. I don't have the exact numbers right now, but it's very popular. So in order to make this more manageable, I think I want to go over the upside, thing that I think is good and positive about this initiative, and then we'll talk about the downsides and the negatives and what might happen and... We'll divide it into a good and a bad, okay. The first thing that I think we should focus on is that any focus on pollution is good. Any environmental focus is good, it activates people, it spreads knowledge about these issues, and yeah, that's just really helpful. It makes more people aware of what's going on, and that can spark changes in people's habits, in their lifestyles, and their diet. So yeah, any kind of publicity about environmentalism is good. It also inspires community. I saw especially in Mr. Beast's video lots of people came together to clean up this beach and efforts like this might spark other people in this huge audience of his to do similar things in their local community. And we really start to see some things change when people stop acting like individual consumers only but also act as part of a community and does what's best for the community. That's a really important thing about sustainability and that's something that I definitely want to see more of. So yeah, lots of people coming together to solve this one issue is really cool. Now you can say a lot about the methods of the video and like the method of these people, but you can't really argue with the fact that this energy gets shit done. <laughs> it's really cool to see people with really big platforms and with lots of resources put them into good use and do something productive and motivating and inspiring and sustainable with those resources. Similarly to this issue with resources, a lot of these content creators, specifically Mr. Beast, has in the past done lots of videos where obscene amounts of money have been spent on certain items or things have been wasted and it's really cool if we start to see a shift in how big content creators produce content and what people want to see. Spending obscene amounts of money saving the environment suddenly isn't really obscene amounts of money, but spending obscene amounts of money filling a swimming pool with Orbeez, you know. And it's cool to see content creators with these means do something good with it. Now I guess that was also about as positive as I could possibly get here. I also have some concerns and I also have something that I want to share and different just thoughts, the downsides. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say it's not really about the environment, it's about views. Mr. Beast has previously in the past and I do believe still uploads very wasteful, very unsustainable content. Content that is very focused on consuming and over consuming, hyper consuming both resources, money and also products. And even with one good video about sustainability I definitely fear he'll go back to making this over consuming related content. That was at least what we saw with the previous initiative called Team Trees where they planted I think 20 million trees but afterwards the normal content reappeared and it seemed like nothing had really changed. And that makes me think that it's not really about making consistent permanent change, it's about making content that people find interesting. Content like eating $100 worth of golden ice cream or buying everything in a department store or buying $600,000 worth of fireworks. 
but is that really a problem? The effort is the same, right? The same amount of trash gets cleaned out of the ocean whether or not people are sincere or insincere about it. Well, it is. However, continuously producing wasteful content about overconsumption is very unsustainable, much more so than that of a normal person's impact. And furthermore, this content is also responsible for upholding a status quo where vast overconsumption is funny or admirable or something worth watching or aspiring to. From a cup half empty point of view, the content and values these creators are responsible for exposing their viewers to is the same values and patterns of consumption that is now to blame for the environmental problems that these creators are now trying to solve. It's definitely a problem if big creators and CEOs and generally just people with lots of influence only care about the environment when it benefits them to do so. While indigenous people are being blocked from social media media when trying to call attention towards environmental issues, rich white dudes benefit and profit so heavily off of doing similar things. And now I know we tap into an economic social structure situation and that was not really where I wanted the video to go, but I think it's something that's really important to have in mind. Point being that we should support these indigenous activists just as much if not more. When an interest in sustainability is only visible when it's profitable, what happens when the viewers move on? The sustainability initiatives go away. And that's not necessarily the consistent climate action we need right now. Now there's also the issue of self-licensing and the green alibi. This is what happens when we perform one green action and then believes it has a bigger positive impact than it actually does. As a result, we can end up consuming more or having a bigger impact because we think we have compensated fairly with our one green action. This is something that many companies do and this is also something that happens to a lot of consumers. One example of which is the airplane companies that have CO2 compensation offsetting programs see an increase in purchases and sales when those options are available because consumers will believe that it's okay now that they have carbon offset their journey they might they can fly and it's going to be okay however the co2 compensation offsetting program is nowhere near enough in order to actually offset or compensate for this journey like that's not how it works at all. Similarly, some studies find that consumers using green power leave on their devices for longer because the power is green. Cleaning up one beach sadly won't fix climate change or the global pollution issue and I could be worried that these initiatives will become green alibis when these content creators later down the line in the future will be criticized for buying fast fashion or making big fast fashion hauls or generally over consuming and wasting large amounts of food or money or resources overall and when they receive criticism for these things, they can point towards this initiative and go, look at this, we helped. We did this, so I'm done. <laughs> We're so not done. Kind of like, see, I care about the planet. I participated in this thing. Oh, this, my swimming pool filled with Kobe beef. Oh, don't look at that. It's fine, look at this, it's better. Compensating for one thing by doing another thing is not how conscious consuming works. We need consistent change. Now there's also the symbolic change, which I also want to talk about. And for this, we'll move a little bit away from the specific issue and more broadly look at ocean cleanups and the discourse of these cleanup initiatives in general, which is something that I find to be very relevant in this case as well. I don't want to sound like a pessimist here, although that's kind of what the whole point of this division of the video was about. Removing plastic from the ocean to combat pollution is kind of like peeing your pants to feel warm. It doesn't really solve the issue, it solves the symptom of it, and then you'll be right back to square one. But these ocean cleanup initiatives often give off a vibe that's very, this is the consumer's fault, the pollution. It's the consumer's. Fault. And if we just stop using plastic straws, then no turtle will be harmed. Can you see where I'm going with this? Just like many anti-plastic straw campaigns that roamed the internet a few years ago, and especially plastic straws, is interesting because it's the perfect example of symbolic change. Less than 0.025% of plastic pollution is straws, plastic straws. The majority of plastic in our oceans today come from ghost gear. 
fishing gear that's left there in the water by the fishing industry. So arguably it would make a much bigger difference if you stopped eating fish than it would if you stopped using plastic straws. Also the whole demonizing plastic straws discourse was really and is really detrimental to people with disabilities. Again, not eating fish or generally applying more policies and restrictions to the fishing industry would be much more effective in terms of combating plastic waste in the oceans. However, that would require a more deep-rooted permanent change and it wouldn't be able to be solved with just buying a reusable, aesthetically pleasing, nice-looking stainless steel straw. You know. <laughs> All shades of reusable straws. I have them myself. It's just I cannot anymore listen to people who attribute the entirety of the plastic pollution problem to that of straws. I cannot hear that anymore. I'm done. And this brings me to my final point. Lack of industrial responsibility. These claps did not match that sentence whatsoever. <laughs> Individuals can keep removing plastic from the ocean until the day we die. It's not really going to matter a whole lot unless we hold the companies responsible for the plastic accountable. Responsible. And of course, this is not to say that removing plastic from the ocean does not matter. Of course, it matters a lot. The more we can remove, the more the better. I always pick up three items of trash whenever I leave my house, just on my street, outside of my neighborhood. Of course, it matters so much that we pick up this stuff. But if we want to invoke real systemic change, we also have to hold these companies accountable. And the reason why I want to talk about this in this specific context is because these people, these content creators, have massive resources, have massive audiences, and just attributing all the solution parts of pollution to that of cleaning up beaches is detrimental and doesn't really work that way. And it could be so cool to see them also look into the industrial side of this issue and hold the corporations accountable. In Mark Robert's video, he shows these big plastic eating robots and those are really cool. Like they can pick up so much more trash than a human can. So that's really cool. He shows how they not only roam in the oceans and picks up trash, but how they go into rivers before the items get into the ocean and they remove the plastic there as well. And he describes what the robots are doing as they're fixing the problem at its source. And that's sadly, untrue. The source of the problem is actually a lack of policies that hold big plastic producing corporations accountable. Legally, they can produce as much plastic as they want to worldwide and they don't have to set up any systems for returns, refilling, recycling, disposal, simple disposal. They don't have to do anything once this product is out there. And that's something we should work as consumers towards changing. I would love to see the energies in this video, I would love to see people like Mr. Beast going head to head with Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola is the number one plastic polluter in the world. They are the company that produces the most consumer plastic. It would be amazingly cool to see him go the more political way or the more industrial way. It would be amazingly cool to see him challenge lobbyists, making petitions, getting political parties involved. All of this stuff, it could be really, really cool to see and that energy could really make a huge difference also with that huge audience. But only focusing on the symptom of the problem and not looking at all the underlying structures that made this situation possible in the first place. It's not that this initiative is not doing a good thing because obviously removing plastic from the ocean, no matter what, is always a good thing. But I fear that this will only push the discourse and the whole narrative of who is responsible for plastic pollution in the ever so seen direction of it's the consumer's fault, which it isn't. You can't really blame consumers who are forced to buy these plastic products for what they do with the plastic once it's done, when there are no underlying structures that can assist them in making sustainable choices. As a conclusion, I really like what these initiatives are doing for the global discourse. How many people are getting activated, how many people are learning about these things for the first time maybe. I definitely see that creators like Mr. Beast has very young audiences and perhaps they're learning about some of this stuff for the first time. That's really cool and that may spark tons of habit changes and lifestyle changes and discussions about sustainability. So obviously I love that. But just like with recycling, cleaning up beaches is only a great start. It's a really bad place to stop. And I hope to see more accountability and responsibility from these content creators that they stick with their sustainable agenda, that they keep talking about this and not just go back to their regularly scheduled programming about wastefulness and overconsumption. 
that would be really really cool but i think this is a great step in the right direction we need to involve the industry in these issues we need to spend the same amount of energy on changing policies and laws as we do making fun cleanup videos with these resources think about what could be achieved these huge audiences could learn about which companies are actually responsible for pollution and these creators could ask their viewers to demand change to write letters to vote at elections or to boycott products you see and with that being said the sun is not on my side today and it's almost dark in here but thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you liked it if you did you can leave me a comment down below let me know your opinion about this stuff that would be really amazing you can also attack the content creators so they see this video that would also be really funny and of course please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more reaction impact videos like this but also tons of other things that you can do to be more sustainable also more practical things in your everyday life i do tons of different types of content so if you want to follow some sustainability content creator that focuses on plant-based eating and low waste, zero waste, I'm your girl. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take a really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.